Hi guys. Hey, it's uh, been a while since I posted one of my videos of me painting my Milky Way. So I thought um, while I do this one, I'll go ahead and get this one posted for you, like a tutorial on how to do them. So what I have here is an 18 by 24 canvas. Um, it's been primed with a black gesso. So I apply a black gesso to it first, allow it to dry. And once it's been dry, I went back over the entire canvas with a liquid clear. Okay, the reason why I'm using liquid clear as opposed to liquid white is because I want the colors to kind of like pop and stand out without being too faded. Okay, so what I'm thinking about doing here is I'm gonna have a Milky Way in this, this top uh, third of the painting, I guess. I'm gonna probably have some mountains in the distance with some trees. Then I'm gonna have a body of water down here with the reflection of the Milky Way. So if I have my Milky Way coming this way, I'm gonna have the reflection go this way. And then I'm gonna go ahead and have a body of land down here as well. So even though I have the black gesso on and I'll have um, the clear, I now need to go through and I wanna put my transparent colors on. Okay, so one of the transparent colors is gonna be phthalo blue, another one's gonna be phthalo green, and also uh, a third's gonna be alizarin crimson. So I'm gonna keep the alizarin crimson down towards the horizon to make it appear like it's gonna be a sunrise. And I'm going to have the phthalo blue and the phthalo green be more of the Milky Way, okay? So I have my palette here and I have my phthalo blue and phthalo green here. So I'm gonna just take a little tiny bit of the phthalo blue and I'm gonna just tap into the brush, bristles of the brush. And then since I know I want my Milky Way here kind of like in the center coming this way, I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, put my phthalo blue in there. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and brush it out to the sides. You probably won't be able to see that on the camera. But believe me, it's there. Once we add a little bit of white to it, it's gonna really pop. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to that phthalo blue and I'm gonna do the same thing down in the water. Okay, so it's gonna come over this way. Try to have it lined up so like this edge over here, so we line up with this edge over here. You don't wanna have part of your show, your part of your uh, reflection being all the way up to the side if it's not there. Okay, so here's the, the water part. Okay, and I'm gonna just kinda of go through and just blend this all together. Then go back and forth to kind of get rid of any brush strokes you may see. Okay, so we'll grab a different brush. It's going to be another two inch brush, but instead of me washing it out and cleaning it all the time, I just have several going on. Um, I'm going to go into the alizarin crimson and do the same thing with alizarin crimson. Tap it onto the bristles of the brush. You don't need a lot, just need a little bit. If I'm gonna go ahead and do the horizon down here, we'll go ahead and see about right there. On both sides. And maybe you have a reflection of that in the water as well. Okay. And the nice thing about uh, the phthalo blue and the lizard crimson when they mix, they make like a purple color. So I really don't care if those mix. I actually kind of like that look anyway. So in fact, I'm actually gonna go ahead and go into that um, lizard crimson. And I'm gonna put some just kind of spots in the blue also, because I do like that purple color. And I'm gonna just go ahead and blend those all together. When I'm blending, I'm just doing these long crisscrosses, okay? And go back and forth and blend it all together. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush now. Um, pretty much what I have over here on the side is just a bucket with a screen put into it where I run my bristles across the bucket. Once I have a wash off, I shake off the excess paint thinner. Then I also have a trash can with a beater rack in it which is kind of loud and I apologize for this, but. So you have to make sure your, your brush is good and dry. Okay, so now for the phthalo green. I don't really want to go the phthalo green into the phthalo blue too much, but I do want to kind of have it in a little, a couple little places. So if I do hit it with white, it's going to pick up a different color. Okay, so tap a little bit of the green and just kind of here and there. Think about um, 
the green and the alizarin crimson. If you get too much of it, it could look brown in color. And we want to kind of avoid browns in the sky for right now. And then long strokes to get rid of everything, all the brush strokes. Okay. One more time to clean my brush. Shake off the excess. And then the lava part. My, uh, my kids will really enjoy that. Okay, so next thing I want to do is I'm going to use my fan brush. I'm going to go into some of the titanium white. And I'm not going to put a lot of paint on here because once we add the white to the canvas, it's going to make those phthalo blue and the phthalo green and the crimson really pop. So what I'm going to do is first I'm just kind of think about where my monkey wheel is going to go. I think I'm going to have it come down this way. So I'm going to just kind of Something like that. Okay. Get a little more of the white. I'm gonna kind of work it back and forth. I'm just kind of putting blue, or I'm sorry, white paint on here, so that um, once you go and blend it all together, it just kind of lightens this part of the sky. So what I'll do now is I'll take my two-inch brush and kind of do like little circles to kind of like blend this together. And we're just trying to, like I said, lighten this area of the sky. Okay, use the other corner of the brush because it's not dirty yet. And do it again. And you can kind of see already where the blues and the greens are kind of mixing. And then what you can do is you can go back over a real light and just kind of blend this together. And when you do it this way, it kind of makes that, that haze look, okay? What I have also, I have a blender brush. Blender brush is very soft. The bristles are very, very soft. And if I use that, I can kind of go through and very lightly blend it even further. Okay, so this is kind of making the background color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and blend it back in. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and wash that blender brush out because anytime you use a blender brush, we want to make sure that you don't take a dirty brush back into the light colors because if you do, it's going to make it look really muddy and everything else. And we want that nice black canvas so those colors really stand out. So I want to keep my brushes clean. And make sure they stay dry. Okay. And sorry, I'm going to be off camera quite a bit here, but. I am just cleaning the brushes off. And you're gonna be able to hear me use the beater rack, so. Okay, so if I want to darken that down a little bit, I can go back through and add um, darker colors to it. Now, even though I have brown, I wanna put brown in the sky just yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back over with a little bit of white to kind of lighten that a little bit more and then alternate between white and purple. Okay, I'm gonna use purple by mixing the lizard and crimson and the phthalo blue. So one more time with the white. Again, just a little tiny bit of white. I'm gonna go back down through the same angle and I'm gonna kind of just do it again. Okay, so of course the more I do this, the whiter it's going to get. Clean brush, make sure it's make sure it's dry. Small circles. Blend it all together. And then you can go ahead and blend those. Crisscross. Okay. So with my palette knife, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of the crimson and some of the stalo blue. Because like I said, I do want to make a purple color. Okay. And since we're using just very little paints on this, it really shouldn't take much to darken that center up. 
Okay, so it is just a little tiny bit and it is more of a lavender color, I guess. Okay. And then I have other fan brushes and everything too. So instead of cleaning that one out, I just got another um, clean fan brush. Okay, so I'm gonna go to that purple color we just made. And I'm gonna load my fan brush up again. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put a darker spot in the middle here. So if I go ahead and work this in, and you can have it coming off in different branches too. It's not all uniform. Okay. Now here's a one inch brush. I just grabbed the one inch brush because my two inch brushes are dirty. So with my one inch brush, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of blend this together. Little crisscrosses, little circles if you want. But we just wanna kind of blend this and push this back into the canvas. Okay. Do that again. And this is just more or less playing with darks and lights. So you can try to get the right look. That time I just knocked off the loose paint. Okay. Using my blender brush again, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of just blend this together. Very light going across this. Then with the brush I use the white for, I'm gonna go ahead and do white again. And once again. What I'm going to do with that dirty brush, I'm going to go into some of this white because we need to still get some reds, some alizarin and crimson over here to kind of show where it's going to be lighter. So I'm going to just kind of touch this on both sides. Okay. Just a little bit of this white. Again, we just need to pick up this red. Okay. Then if I go through and blend this. On both sides. Long strokes. Once I do the mountains and everything else, that's going to look real nice. It's going to look like it's uh, sunlight coming up behind the, um, the mountains. Okay, one more time. I'm going to go through. I'm using the, the white brush. I'm just making a lighter color lavender. And I'm going to go ahead and do this again. Just to add more depth to it. Okay. Use my brush, knock off the paint. and blend that in. Okay, this is gonna be several steps like this, so just wanna make sure that everything is blended, everything looks like it's actual in the distance. Okay, go back in with the dark color again. And this time we're going to go ahead and just kind of work this back and forth. Now once again, blend that in too so it gets pushed into the canvas. So that's how our Milky Way is going to look. Okay, like I said, I am going to have mountains and everything else. Before I can do mountains, I need to kind of put stars up on there. So what I'm going to do is wash out all my fan brushes.
wash out my fan brush. I'm going to get a little bit of um, liquid white, only so that um, it's already thinned down and it's going to fall off my brush a lot easier. If you want to just thin down some of your titanium white, you can do that as well. But let me um, get some of the liquid white. Bear with you guys. Okay. So here's my liquid white. You can see how much thinner it is. It's almost like ink. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna use my pilot knife and the fan brush to actually make stars. Okay, so let me get my fan brush and I'll put my pilot down for a minute. Got my fan brush all clean. Okay, I'm going to use this this white that we have. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the knife and I'm going to just kind of flick the bristles bristles across there, and it's going to make a have little tiny droplets everywhere. So I do it just right. You can kind of control where they fall. You want to make sure they're spread out and not everywhere. If they get too thick, what's going to happen is they're going to start dripping and running too. Okay. And if it happens, you just use your, your knife and you kind of make like a shooting star out of it. So you, you could just grab one of these like this and just make, make a little shooting star. That's all. So those are all the stars I want for the painting. Uh, you can do as many or as little as you want. I do it now before I do the water because I don't want to have the white in the water. It can kind of make it look too messy. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is make some mountains here in the background. Okay. And to do that, I need dark colors. So since we already have the, this like dark lavender color, we can use that because it's still dark in color. Maybe add a little more of Phthalo blue, a little more of the crimson. I think I will add a little bit of the brown maybe. Since we already have the black background for the night sky, we need to have a different color other than black, okay? If you just do black on top of the black, you're not gonna be able to separate them out. So even though this is gonna be a dark color, it's going to be different enough so that we can still differentiate between the night sky and the mountains. Okay, so I think that's dark enough. Okay, so to make the mountains, what you want to do is you want to go ahead, pick the paint up, pull it out flat, and then with your knife, make a little roll, make a little cut across to get a little roll, on the, roll of paint on your knife. You got to just think about where the actual mountain's going to go. And I'm thinking something like, maybe like that on the one side. On the other side, maybe have it come like that. And again, I'm just pulling the paint out flat and just cutting across. So you have a little tiny bit of paint around the edge of the knife, okay? And you can make as many peaks as you'd like. But again, we're just more or less trying to worry about the, the top edge of this. Okay. And then all the extra paint, just go ahead and scrape it off. Again, because like I said, we just want to worry about the top edge. So once you have that um, kind of put in, you want to take one of your two inch brushes and I need to get one cleaned up. So give me 10 seconds here to get this brush cleaned up. I'll shake off the excess paint thinner. Make sure you guys use an odorless paint thinner. Okay, if you don't get odorless paint thinner, your whole house is going to stink. Okay. 
So make sure your, your brush is good and dry. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and grab this paint and pull it. Okay, don't touch the top edge. You wanna keep that clean, but you're gonna go ahead and all the other paint, we're gonna go ahead and pull. And the nice thing about having the colors down below, as you mix this, it actually creates like that, that mist at the bottom of the mountains. Okay. Now, with our knife, we gotta figure out where the light's coming from. Now, with it being nighttime and everything else, you really can't say the sun's coming from here, the sun's coming from there. So we do wanna highlight the mountains, but we have to be careful we don't overpower them with too much light and too much dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of this white. We can, we can even use the um, liquid white if we wanted to. If we put enough paint into it, just kind of thins it, thins it down a little bit, which is good for doing the mountains, okay? Get some more titanium white mixed in there. We do want, even though, like I said, we do want the light side to be rather dark, we gotta make sure it's a little bit lighter than the actual dark side though, okay? So I think I wanna just go ahead and make this side darker, or this is gonna be with the side where the light's coming from, coming from this side, only because I'm right hand, it's easier for me to do the highlights on this side, okay? So I have my my snow, my dark snow for this. I pulled it out thin. I'm gonna cut a little roll of paint off the top of it. And I'm gonna to go to my peaks, touch the, touch the knife on it, and then just kind of let it bounce off. Okay. So again, a little roll of paint, go to my next peak, and have the paint break. Okay. So I'm gonna just keep repeating this process for all of my peaks. Now, if it turns out that I want this peak right here behind this mountain, mountain, I'm gonna just go ahead and put a little tiny bit of snow on the top like that. And then I do my shadows, I have my shadow come across this way to make that mountain look like it's further back. Okay. Another roll of paint, touch and bounce it off. Touch, let it bounce. Okay. Try to get, keep your angles consistent, okay? You can actually kind of like play this back and forth and everything if you wanted to have different peaks. If you don't want just the top like that, you can kind of come this way too with it. But basically what you want to do, you want to make sure this, this paint's breaking on here, okay? The more the paint breaks, the more it looks like rocks and shadows and all kinds of of neat little effects, okay? Okay, so that's gonna be the side with my light hitting it. Now for the dark side, I'm gonna use that same color, but I'm gonna put in more of my lavender. Okay, because this side's gotta be a lot darker. Okay, you can still keep it marble like that, but you just have to make sure that the dark side, the shadow side is darker than your side with the light. So now if you come up underneath here and come the other direction, you will see how you start to make the shadow and makes the mountain look like it's really standing out. I'm just keep cutting off the roll of paint. I just, I'm pulling it out thin, cutting a little roll of paint off, 
Now I'll go to the other mountain, the other peak. Like I said, that's going to be in front of that mountain. So you cut it off. You want to go right in front of that one. Any place you put light, you have to put a shadow behind it. Okay, if not, it's going to just look like it doesn't doesn't isn't supposed to be there. And the nice thing about doing these, if there's something you don't like, just go back over it. Do it again. Okay. If it turns out that you think you want another peak someplace, lighten that shadow up a little bit and just have it come over here. Okay, but remember, if you put a peak in there with light, you have to go back over with the dark. And you can spend so much time going back and forth with the colors and everything else. But I think that I'm going to just go ahead and say that's good enough for, for what I want to do right now. Okay. So once you have the mountains done like that, you still have to make the illusion of fog or mist in the bottom of it. Because if not, it's going to be right on top of your trees and your water and everything else. Okay, so what you need to do is with a, with a brush, I want you to, this brush isn't clean enough. Do you see how I start putting paint back onto it? So make sure your brush is clean. Let me uh, spend another five or 10 seconds getting this cleaned off. Make sure it's good and dry. Okay. Now if you go back through and tap this, you can start making mist. Okay, but you gotta be careful, you have to follow the angles. So since the mount, this mountain's going this direction, I have to tap in that direction. Now I'm not getting it and pulling it, I'm just tapping the base. But my, my brush is lined up with the angle. The angle this way goes this direction, so just change your bristle. Okay, so once you've done that, you want to go back over and do this lifting motion, and you'll actually just kind of like get rid of all those brush strokes and make sure you don't pick up any extra paint. Just do this very lightly. Okay, and then you can go ahead and blend it out. If you get a hair inside your paint on this, just take the corner of the brush, just flick it away. Okay. All right, so let me clean off my fan brush. Actually, you know what? I think I may be able to use the same color. Okay, so I have a little bit of that um, lavender color left. I'm going to get more of the alizarin, more of the phthalo blue. I'm going to thin that down a little bit. Let me get a little tiny bit of paint thinner. Because the problem is you need thin paint to stick to thick paint. Okay, so since I already have, you figure all the layers I have on here already, I have the black. I have the liquid clear, I have the base of the mountain, I have the actual snow on the mountain. So I'm keep putting layers on. So each time I do that, the paint needs to be a little bit thinner. Okay, so we'll see if that's thin enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, probably gonna add, let's see, let me do some pine trees. So if you just tap it up and down like this with your fan brush, you can make what looks like pine trees off in the distance. Okay.
Okay, so once you have this little, these little pine trees like way in the distance, like I said, you just want to have a couple here and there. You want to be able to kind of see like the tops of them. Everything that happens on the bottom, we're not really too concerned with. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use my two inch brush. And I'm going to just tap that too. If I, if I can tap that, I can make that look misty as well. Okay, now if you want to put a little bit of highlight on there, you can always go back and add a little tiny bit of white with maybe a little bit of that color. So it looks more, a little bit lighter. Okay, if you just want to go ahead and highlight a couple of these just to kind of make them stand out. Also kind of add some depth to it. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and use my blender brush and just kind of blend that together. Okay, we don't want to, we don't want them to be too distinct. We want to just kind of be blended in the background. Okay, so since we have our Milky Way going this way, and this is going to be our water, we need the Milky Way to come this direction. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, since the water is going to be blue anyway, I can still use this dirty brush, and I'm going to use my fan brush. And I'm going to just try to think that it's going to start here and come all the way over to about there. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of work this in. Use my clean too much brush, shake off the excess, go back to my beater rack. Like I said, whenever I show my students these paintings and everything else, they get a kick out of that. So I'm gonna just do, I'm gonna go ahead and use little circles to kind of like blend this in. And if you remember when I first did the painting, I put some colors in here. You gotta make sure it's good and dry or else you're gonna start mixing the the black and everything underneath it, so make sure it's good and dry. Okay. And let me use some of this purple color. And again, we're gonna go ahead and work that in. Mix it together a little bit. Since this is wide, we gotta make make this wider too. Okay, we're gonna come down here like this. Purples, blend it. Again, make sure your brush is clean. Blend that. And I think we're almost done with that. So let's go back into our white. And let's see if we can do this one more time. Blend that out. Okay, so that's gonna kind of mimic what you see in the sky. Okay. I need a little bit darker color. Just a little bit, we gotta make it look realistic. We can't just kind of have people guessing what is that, so. All right. So what you, what you could even do is, let me put down some of these brushes. I'm holding too many brushes in my hand. I shouldn't be doing that. Okay, 
Okay, so if I went into the white and just kind of like touched it right here and pull it straight down. Okay. Shake off the excess and very lightly go over this. Add a little more of the purple. I'm being way too critical with this one. So there's my water with the reflection. Okay. So I think what I want to just do here is I want to go ahead and add a couple of big pine trees on either side of here. I'm going to put some um, ground down here. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to just take all my dirty brushes and just kind of like create like land back in here. So it kind of looks like there's a bunch of bushes and I'm just kind of push, pushing the bristles upward so it kind of like picks things up and moves them around. Okay. Then what you need to do, I'm going to use a different, let me clean up my palette a little bit. I got too much paint going on here. So let me um, move that over. What I want to do is get a little tiny bit of um, my liquid white. Okay, so I got more of that liquid white. What I'm gonna just do is kind of put the knife at an angle and pick up on it. So I cut across and have the, the pan on the top of the knife this time. So for my water lines, I wanna keep the knife straight. And kind of try to cut through the canvas. And then you can also add water lines. Let me do that again. Pull it out straight, cut across. And you can also add like water lines out in the water too. Okay. So now that I have my land created in the background, um, I'm gonna go ahead and add my trees. So when we do pine trees, we want to use our fan brush. And we're going to need, need a dark color for this. We don't want anything too bright, but we do want to make sure this tree stands out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is use more of the crimson, more of the phthalo blue. Mix these together. We just need the good dark color. Okay, now depending on how much blue and how much red you mix to it, you can either have it on the blue side or on the red side. I think for right now, I'm gonna have it on the blue side. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a pine tree right, we'll say right there. Once I get it started, I can go back to the corner of the brush and keep working it down. This is gonna be a big one. Okay. Actually, you know what, let me go ahead and mix up more paint because I'm gonna need more of this. I'm gonna do several of the trees. Okay, so I'm gonna take the crimson, a little blue, Mix that together. 
maybe even add a little bit of brown to this because we are just trying to make a dark color. Okay, so I think we have enough paint now mixed up. With that dark color, maybe there's gonna be another one right here. Then we go back and redo that one because that one was a little bit too light for me. Carefully, you want to start mixing them because if you look up here, it's not starting to stick. So, I need to do is get a little bit of paint thinner to it, just a little bit of paint thinner, and then I go back over it. You see how it now sticks. Okay, let's do one on the other side. to another one we'll do right there a little bit of paint thinner so it sticks to the mountains better So now we need to do, we need to go over and put highlights on it. Okay. Bring it back up. Before we do that, I'm gonna put a tree trunk on it. Okay, so for that, you just take your knife and you just cut through it. And it'll give an impression of tree trunks, okay? Now with this brush here that has the light colors on it, I'm gonna just go ahead and use that too because like I said, we don't need these to be extremely bright, but we definitely do need a thinner. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little more of my paint thinner and just kind of mix that in there. And I'm gonna go back through and highlight the trees. Okay, it doesn't have to be every single branch. Next tree, go back over, put highlights on those branches. Again, not every single, we're just kind of trying to add a little bit of highlights. You have more highlights on this side than you have on that side. Okay, this side, more highlights. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is use our one inch brush and I'm going to make some shrubs and bushes, just kind of like add land to this. So, I'm going to just kind of have my land 
come down this direction. So I'm going to just kind of like tap this in. We just need to add color down here, okay? So if you pull your brush through the paint in one direction, it will start getting a curve to it. If you put that curve to the top and just kind of like push up, you make little, little shrubs. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, since we have the dark color on it now, I'm going to clean my brush. What we can do is start adding some highlights to those. I'm actually going to switch over and use this brush here. It's called the foliage brush. Okay, so if I use that, I'm going to put a little bit of. Um, liquid white, magic white on it. Okay, I can add a little bit of color to it. But basically what I'm trying to do is get this paint super thin. So now what I do is whenever I touch the canvas very lightly, it's gonna make it look like leaves. Okay, I want you to think about shapes too. So there could be like a, a bush right there. Maybe right there. And then as you add different colors to it, they make it look like they're different trees, different depths, different different layers. Okay, and you want some of this dark left behind. Okay, you don't want to have everything all kind of colored over. Okay, I'm putting a little bit of red in there also. And why not a little bit of yellow. And if you wanted to, you can always use a different brush to give it a different look. A little bit more here. I want to just do is add a little bit of red with a little bit of white. I want to make this one stand out a little, a little bit more. Oh, look at that one. Okay. And right now I'm just kind of going through and trying to add it so that it looks like a bunch of different bushes, a bunch of different shapes. Okay. 
Again, don't just throw the paint on there. I want you guys to, as you're doing this, kind of look around to see, oh, there's a bush right there. Okay. Maybe you have another one maybe that comes up like this. Okay. What you can do to add more detail, take your knife and start scratching in like little tree trunks, or I guess it won't be tree trunks, little branches and everything. Okay, if you do this, it's gonna make it look like there's things happening underneath, behind some things. Okay. So, I think we're just about done with it. I need to go ahead now and um, sign this one. I always sign mine and um, bright red, probably because that's what Bob Ross did and he's one of my idols when it comes to painting. Um, this technique is not necessarily his, he didn't invent it. This is actually something that um, has been around for a very long time, but um, a gentleman by the name of um, William Alexander kind of brought it to light again. And then Bob Ross kind of grew it since then. So I'm going to just go ahead and sign my name down here. With, like I said, a little bit of the red bend down. And I think we'll say that's it. Hope you enjoyed this one. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.